Welcome to the worst of the best podcast. You wanted the best. They didn't freaking make it! So here's what you get. From Canada, Ryan and Jason. Welcome to another episode of the Worst of the Best podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and with me today, again, as always, more or less, my brother Jason. How are you doing? Doing good, Ryan. Nice to be here. At the time of this recording, happy Thanksgiving, Canada-wide. Soon it'll be the American Thanksgiving next month, and of course, the holidays with Christmas. And apropos that today's topic is ice cream, Jason, because ice cream is used throughout many people's desserts, and they'll have ice cream with their pies or, or and things like that. We just had summer, of course. People had ice cream when they go to the beaches and parks. Jason, what's your thoughts on ice cream in general? I love ice cream. I, yeah. I haven't participated in eating ice cream in a very long time, and but it is. It would be like, hey, Jason, if you're to eat something as a cheat dessert. In your life, what would it be? Ice cream would be very much on the top of the list. I very much love ice cream. It's one of those things that I do miss. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't eat ice cream anymore because I just don't. I don't eat sugar as a practice. I used to eat ice cream all the right. time. I'd have ice cream. I, yeah. I used to buy ice cream and put in my Slurpees. I would have ice cream shakes, ice cream with pie, oh, yeah. and so yeah. yeah. My diet now is like yours. I don't have ice cream anymore. So. That being said, I love ice cream. For you, would it be one of the top ice cream items that you would reintroduce? Oh, yeah. Remember ice cream cake for your birthdays? Oh, yeah, of course it is. Chocolate crunch middle. (laughs) Yeah, there's very few ice cream flavors, Jason, that I've come across in my life where I'm like, nah, not going to have it. And I almost thought about doing an episode, and maybe we still will, of the 10 worst flavors of ice cream. So one that comes to mind is the ramen raisin one. You remember that one? I do. (laughs) (laughs) but that's not today folks today we are doing the top unique ice cream flavors from around the world so these are ice cream flavors that you won't find in probably so much unless it's a specialty shop but you won't find this in your normal baskin robbins or a and w or dairy queen when you're in canada the uk and the usa Uh, one of them is actually from mexico so it's about to say north america so that's not true so there's one from mexico okay so these are unique flavors. And so what Jay and I had to do is we had to canvas these countries and say, hey, man, what kind of ice cream do you have here that you don't find in Canada or in the United States? And tell us about it. So we were able to get 10 responses, Jason. That's really great of our listeners that they were able to do that for us. So we're going to give their experiences as to what the flavors are like and what it is that they have in their countries that's unique to their countries. And then, of course, Jason and I haven't had these, but our worst pick will be of the 10, which one would we kindly decline and say, mm, cool, it's cool that you're doing that, thanks, but no thanks. It doesn't mean we wouldn't, but if we had to choose one to say no thanks to, which one would it be? All right. So, Jason, who can resist the allure of ice cream? It's the delectable dessert capable of brightening anyone's mood. Whether the sun beats down on a scorching summer day or the chill of a winter night sets in, Ice cream transcends seasons, but why limit yourself to the familiar choices of vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry, though they're very yummy, when you can embark on a worldwide ice cream journey? Come with me and Jason as we venture into the realm of 10 extraordinary ice cream flavors hailing from various corners of the globe. Okay, number 10, this ice cream flavor, Jason, comes from Singapore. You ever been to Singapore? No, I have not. Have Remember you? our grandfather? He went there, our dad's dad. He, he went to Singapore, and he, I think he brought back Singapore shirts for us when we were kids. Do you recall that? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I think there's a photo of me wearing a Singapore shirt. Yeah. Okay, so this ice cream flavor, Jason, is called the Durian. And I saw this Durian. I was thinking of the band Duran. <laughs> this is Durian Durian. They have some great hits. So this is called Durian ice cream. Now, Singapore serves up a surprising treat, Durian ice cream. Now, Jason, you might be wondering, what is durian? Do you have any idea what durian is? No, I don't. It's spiky on the outside, but incredibly creamy and sweet inside. Durian is often called the king of fruits, but it's also famous for having a unique, let's say, strong, pugnant smell. 
Some people love it. Ooh. Yes, well, I have heard of okay. this yeah. type of fruit. Yeah. Well, of course, some people love that, and while others can't stand it. But when it comes to ice cream, it's a game changer. Durian ice cream is like a tropical party in your mouth. It combines durian smooth custard-like texture. Oh, I do love custard. With the cool and refreshing goodness of ice cream. The result? A flavor that's as bold and distinctive as Singapore itself. The first bite is a sweet, exotic journey with the mix of fruity, custard, and slightly nutty flavors. So, Jason, it's time to say goodbye to Borno Vanilla. Plus, the ice cream's chilliness mellows out the durian's strong taste, creating a dessert that's perfectly balanced and delicious. So I did look online, of course, to see what this durian fruit looks like. And it's just like it's described there by our listener. It's spiky outside shell. It's they're quite large. It's about the size of a cantaloupe. And to get inside the inside is quite a bit of shell to get through. It's amazing that humans saw this and just cracked it open to say, what's in here? And then they made that ice cream. What are your thoughts there? As described, it sounds delicious. And I'm also a fan of custard. Yeah, good I like yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that one sounds good. I don't think that one's going to make my worst off it right away, but we're not going to say that till the end of course. But every now and then we like to say which one we think might be kind of on the precipice of a worst. But yeah, that one's sounding okay. That one doesn't sound like it might challenge my my North American palate. palate. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for number nine? Yeah. So olive oil ice cream. So this is from Italy. When you think of Italy, you probably picture pasta or a hearty sauce over a polenta. But guess what? Italy has also a unique and incredibly tasty ice cream flavor, olive oil ice cream. It's like taking your taste buds on a journey to the Mediterranean. Mm. A spoonful of this ice cream is as smooth as a boat gliding through the canals of Venice and as rich as the history that fills Rome's ancient streets. Italians have figured out how to blend the deliciousness of extra virgin olive oil with the sweet, creamy goodness of traditional gelato. It's like mouth-watering symphony of sweet and savory. The olive oil gives it a fruity, slightly peppery taste. This flavor might make you question everything you thought you knew about ice cream. Is it a dessert or culinary masterpiece? <laughs> Is it sweet or savory? Don't overthink it. Just savor every bite. All right. Thank you to our Italian listener there. Yes. Interesting. Olive oil ice cream. Olive oil, does it have a taste? If you're just taking... I take olive oil often, several times a week. If okay. I, I try every day, a little tablespoon or two. I'm trying to envision how they would transition that into an ice cream. Because it, if you get the true... Yeah, are you talking about true you, olive Yeah, I don't want to go to Costco to get olive oil or... Uh, super uh, a store I, I will go there's a place five minutes from here and they sell olive oil and balsamic vinegar from around the world and they have it in stainless steel containers mm. they have the polyphenol counts on it what country it's from what day or month it was uh, harvested when it was crushed so it is truly olive oil specialty store so when they do talk about the peppery taste okay so when you take a, a little swig of an actual properly, very unrefined, if not refined at all, but just properly cold pressed, there is an irritation in the back of your throat. Uh -huh. And it gives you like a, you want to give it a bit of a cough because it has an irritation and there is a pepperiness to it. So that is an indication of a, a purer form of olive oil. And you go, okay, this is probably pretty legit. Where you probably heard all of right. the grocery stores, they might be cut with other cheaper oils and blah, blah, blah. And it has a bit of a, a bite. Now, it's not bad. You're not going to go, oh, I really like that taste necessarily. Right. But if you add it to uh, a dish or cooking or whatever, it'll blend in nicely. If you just have a small swig of a tablespoon or so, there might be that slight cough and irritation. So to add that true Italian pure olive oil to ice cream, it would be an interesting experience to see how that would be incorporated. Okay. So yeah, sweet and savory. I can see how that would be used to describe an olive oil ice cream. I've been guilty of just using your common big glass jar olive oil. Sure. That yeah. For cooking, for frying up a stir fry or something like that. Nothing, nothing crazy. But interesting. I would never would have thought of. Making it into an ice cream flavor. Okay. Now, the next one, uh, our, one of our listeners in our live chat right now. Again, if you want to join us in our live chat like Mr. David is, 
uh, join our Discord or our socials online like Twitter or Facebook because I announce when we're going live and then you can join us when we're live. If you can make that timing and you can add to the conversation of the actual podcast episode itself. David, before the show we started, he mentioned that there is, is a violet flavor in Bulgaria. Now, that's not one of the ones we're doing, David. We should have asked you mm. before we went live if you could describe what that's like. However, we got one close to that, maybe close. This is lavender. Hey, Ryan, cream. sir, just before you go back. Yeah, sure. David said hi to me and, and welcome back at the very beginning. Yes, he did. So, yeah. So I, I appreciate that, David. It's nice to be back. Yeah, it's good thank to have you. Jason back. Yeah. We'd like to thank our other guest host, but yeah, of course, we'd love to have her. My brother is the first and foremost. We appreciate having him here. Yeah. All right. So lavender. I think that lavender is considered like a violet color almost. So I wonder if there's some similarities between the Bulgaria violet and the lavender. Mm. So this is from France. So, you, Jay, that calming feeling you get when you smell lavender and you no. instantly feel relaxed. <laughs> have you ever experienced that? Well, our listener has when they're in France. Okay. Imagine that experience for your taste buds. Lavender ice cream from France is like enjoying a sweet walk through a lavender field on a warm summer day. It's like they captured the essence of those beautiful purple fields in a scoop of ice cream. This flavor is seriously unique. Combining the flowery, flowery smell of lavender with the creamy deliciousness of ice cream. But don't worry. It's not overpowering like your grandma's potpourri. It's a gentle mix of sweet and floral flavors. The texture is super smooth, and the color, it's that soft, calming shade of purple that makes you want to dig in right away. I never thought of lavender as having a flavor. This one might be a little bit tricky. This is almost like a flower, like a legit flower in your ice cream. Do, do we not use lavender in any way, like in cooking? No. I'm not I mean, a it's cook. In... I could ask Becky, but I... I... Yeah, I don't know. I like I know people use lavender like in soaps and... Right, the smell Maybe they add it to a, a, a warm bath or something. And it's, and it's often yeah equated with relaxation. I've never seen the draw to lavender myself. I, I don't think of it as a uniquely special I smell think... or experience. I think it might be Becky, my wife. Uh, it might be her favorite flower. I think I just text her to come here and I'll ask her if she doesn't. So we'll interrupt whatever number we're on if she comes here, but into the office. But uh, yeah, anyways, it, it could be a nice, it's a nice, be a nice looking um, color re recurring to or uh, as a plant. It's a pretty hard, isn't, isn't it? The one that's long, yeah, shape? yeah, yeah. And, and it kind of got like bell, bell shaped flowers or something like buds, yeah, or? yeah. It has a nice color if I'm picturing there. So it does have a nice color, it's definitely got a, a strong smell to it. Mm -hmm. Like you could walk up to the, the plant and you definitely smell the lavender flavoring from the flowers. But I just wonder who thought, hey, let's put a lavender in our ice cream. What an interesting combo. I wonder if a leaf fell in from the dining room table when they're eating vanilla ice cream and they thought, hey, you know what? That's not bad. Let's do something with this. <laughs> Maybe that's how all these happen to be quite honest with you. A sesame seed oil fell into something and yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. So that is from France. Again, it's lavender ice cream. What's number seven, Jay? So we're going to go to Japan now. Like our podcast is global. It's very cool. And yeah, and reaches all these countries, including Japan. And one of our listeners from Japan talked to us about the black sesame ice cream. Mm, I've never heard of this. No. If you're tired of the same old vanilla and chocolate frozen yogurt swirl, you should consider a trip to Japan. Mm. They've got something called the black sesame ice cream. It's as dark as night without a moon, but bursting with a nutty, toasty flavor. Think of it as a cooler or more mysterious cousin of the regular vanilla ice cream. The Japanese have become experts at mixing the earthy, slightly bitter taste of roasted black sesame seeds with the sweetness of ice cream. The outcome? Eye-catching color and a surprising flavor that you won't forget. It's a delightful blend that's both classy and addictive. I have to say ice cream in general could be quite addictive. Oh, here's my wife. I have a question for you, babe. You're on camera. You look lovely as always. So we have a question. Lavender, isn't that your favorite flower? You like it? Okay. It's, oh, it's one of your favorite. It's one of your favorites. Is it ever used for cooking? Yeah. Oh, it is. For what dishes? Yeah, but we were talking about cookies. Oh. You make iced tea with it. Mm. There you go. Okay, there you have it, folks. We're talking about ice cream. So we it was ice cream flavored. Ice All right. 
she, like, she's had lavender ice cream. Have you had lavender ice cream? No. Oh. Have you heard of it? Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, there she's you go. more cultured than we are, Jason. That's for sure. All right. All right. Carry on with your w- wifely duties. Working. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Get back to work. Make me some money. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, honey. So there you go. Have to be girl. honest, this sounds. Oh, back good to the to black me. sesame. Yeah, yeah, this yeah one does the black sound sesame. Good. Uh, like, if you think of remember those sesame snap or sesame. Oh yeah, those sesame those little, snaps. Yeah, sesame snaps, and they have that sweetness mixed with. The, oh, but if it was black, sure, it's the same idea. It'd be be similar, and I can envision that maybe like a vanilla wafer type of ice cream. And I was just thinking too, like vanilla, when you get that real vanilla ice cream and it's mm-hmm. got the vanilla chunks or seeds or whatever, it's, yes. this is probably the equivalent of it. It's almost like a more hardened vanilla. It's yeah. just a little bit more tart or a little bit more earthy, as it says. So I think yeah. that's what you're, you're dealing with. Vanilla is like older, stronger brother type thing. Okay. All right, cool. Black sesame seed ice cream. Yeah, so far, all these are sounding pretty darn good. I don't think I'd say no to most of these. Oh, I was going to say I would try them all for sure. I wouldn't be like oh, concerned yeah. about trying them. I think all these flavors, to be honest with you, I'd be, I've, of course, I've already seen the list, but I would say all these flavors are, I would definitely try them. But there's certainly two, if I had to choose, there's two that I might, and I won't say any more than that because we're getting near the bottom half here. Okay. But I would definitely try, I would almost try anything once. Sorry, it's like a bad joke, but I won't. Yeah, I was, I was thinking <laughs> some stuff too. <laughs> nope, don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay here we go we've mentioned this because it kind of ties in with olive oil this is number six balsamic vinegar ice cream this is from italy we're back to italy if you thought ice cream couldn't get any better think again jason italy has another surprise for us balsamic vinegar ice cream yes that's right ice cream with balsamic vinegar in it it might sound odd at first After all, balsamic vinegar is typically used on things like salads, roast chicken, not an ice cream. However, the combination of sweet, tangy, and the slightly acidic flavors from the balsamic vinegar surprisingly complements the ice cream quite well. This Italian dessert might raise a few eyebrows, but trust me, says our listener, it's a flavor you won't want to miss. Imagine like a fine aged wine, but in a frozen scoopable form. The balsamic vinegar adds complexity that takes your taste buds on an exciting journey. It starts off with sweet and then surprise. But don't worry, it's not overwhelming. The creamy ice cream balances it out beautifully, blending those refreshing flavors. It's like a mix of sweet and sour and an ice cream cone. There you go. If you had to choose just between the two of them, let's just say, would you rather try it from Italy because they're from the same country? Would you rather have olive oil ice cream or balsamic vinegar ice cream? Which one would you want to try? I suspect the balsamic will have a better relationship with the ice cream experience. Mm, interesting. And, and the only reason I say that is because where I do buy my, like I said, mentioned earlier, where I do buy my olive oil, they have balsamic vinegar and a whole variety. It's probably like, it's like the Baskin Robbins of balsamic vinegar and a whole variety of flavors. And like, it's, yeah, I can't even describe how many different flavors, but so a whole variety of flavors of the balsamic experience and they do have the sweetnesses and the different, it might be like a chocolate balsamic vinegar or, and then Mm. raspberry balsamic vinegar, lemon balsamic vinegar. And depending on the dish or the type of salad that you would put that on, they try to help encourage you to buy some balsamic vinegar and you mix it with your oils, your olive oil and match those flavors in different countries. And then you could have a really nice, dressing for your salad the only reason i wouldn't pick a balsamic vinegar even though i've done little tiny little taste tests just out of curiosity balsamic vinegar tends to have a high content of sugar Hmm. so i I wouldn't buy it for that but out of just curiosity i would have like little tiny taste tests and and i can see how putting a a flavored of balsamic vinegar on a, a nice cream could be a, a, an interesting contrasting experience. Yeah, I think if I had to choose between the two, I'd choose just out of curiosity. I'd probably just try the balsamic because it sounds more exciting. The yeah. olive oil probably has a nice texture and everything we described with that or the listener described to us. But yeah, I think the balsamic might be just say, hey, you might as well just try it. Try something a little bit more crazy, so to speak, or a little bit more. I had no idea this was going to work. 
but there you go. Yeah. Before going to that store, I wouldn't know exactly what balsamic vinegar with that experience mm. would be. But having right. tasted it, I can see how pairing it with an ice cream, if done properly, would be a, probably a quite enjoyable experience, actually. Nice. Yeah. All right. You've got uh, the next one, Jay. From yeah, Trump's, so, Trump's favorite country. Can you try to say it like you can? Yeah. China. China. <laughs> so, yeah. I love how he says that word. I can't, I know, yeah. I can never. I can never say or, China now. <laughs> he's either wrecked it or made it amazing for the rest of our life because I, I can never say the word China without hearing him or seeing him do the way he says it. It's just China. It's amazing. It's or, just, yeah. I, yeah. Anyways, all right. So, yeah, red bean ice cream. Mm. You might be wondering. Why would anyone put beans in ice cream? This isn't a diet-friendly option. But don't worry, we're not talking about your typical baked beans. Okay. This ice cream is creamy and smooth with a subtle sweetness from red beans. It's like a cozy, comforting treat for your taste buds. An unexpected but delightful combination that will keep you coming back for more. The red beans add a hearty, nutty flavor that complements the creamy base perfectly. It's like a culinary balance, combining richness and lightness in every bite. And rest assured, this isn't some experimental creation. Red bean desserts have been a part of the Chinese cuisine for centuries, known for their earthy and wholesome taste. So it's not just ice cream. It's a taste of tradition that's been preserved in a frozen form. Oh, so they've had this for a long time. This is something they've had as a treat or as a dessert in their country. So I guess they probably have a lot of red beans there. This isn't your baked beans that you find wieners and yeah. bean cans. These, these it's not, it's real... not your chili beans. That's it's right. It's probably closer to a vanilla bean experience, I'm guessing. I'm not that enticed by our friend from China. China. And we, we and do appreciate they, the uh, input. They, the they, there. Yeah, we do. We do. But I'm not really drawn to her. But I would suspect it's probably closer to a, an experience that you would have with vanilla. And I, I think the red bean is that nut. They talked again about the earthy. Yeah. So it's more that kind of a rough edge to it with the cream wrapped around it or the sugar and the cream. You think of how many ice cream, pecan, walnut, probably even almonds and ice cream. So I would suspect a red bean would be a similar experience to yeah. that type of. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting choice there, Chinese listener. Red bean ice cream. All right. Their neighbors, but we're going back to Japan again. I think Japan, if just a reminder, they gave us the black sesame. They have another one for us wasabi. <laughs> wasabi ice cream. So imagine what happens when Japan's fiery wasabi sauce meets the creamy coolness of ice cream. Get ready, Jason, for a flavor journey because that's exactly what wasabi ice cream is all about. Yes, wasabi is the green stuff you usually put on sushi or for a spicy kick. But when it's an ice cream form, it becomes something entirely different. It's not just about the heat. The ice cream combines creamy sweetness with that unmistakable wasabi flavor, creating a delightful tingling sensation in your mouth. It's not just sweet. It has a spicy kick as well. Now, I'll be honest, Jay, wasabi ice cream isn't for the faint of heart. But if you're an adventurous eater, it's a must try. Just a heads up, though. Get ready for a burst of flavors that will leave you wanting more. Jason, are you up? for trying a bowl of wasabi ice cream. Okay, if you were to have sushi and you put a dash, tiny little bit of wasabi, it does have a hit, right? Oh yeah, it, it's crazy. What- <laughs> Wasabi's insane, is it? Where's it from? Is it, from- it must be a plant, right? Or I would maybe- suspect it a- comes from- derived from a plant and I'm suffering with a little bit of a cold, surprisingly. <clears throat> but if I had a touch of wasabi right now, I probably clear my sinuses, open right. up my throat. I would feel like probably a uh, hundred bucks for the next hour. Cause I would be like all opened up and uh, wake me up and all the rest, but you don't want too much. Or at least I wouldn't want too much. So it'd be interesting no. to see how they incorporate the wasabi and into an ice cream, whether it would be just overpowering and who knows, like in Japan, they're traditionally, they might be more accustomed to the ratio of how much wasabi they actually put into it. But They did say that there would be a tingle in your mouth, so there's enough to feel that kick, the bit of the spice. Have you ever had spicy, like, jujubes or something, like a cinnamon jujubes? 
I don't know what they call them in the States, but the, the chewy, the chew in your mouth, the gummy like chewy things. So you've experienced, at least I know I have tasting candy that is a bit has a bit of a oh, like spice the, kick. So, the cinnamon hearts yeah those type of things so if you get the really good ones then they do have a little bit of a bit bite. Of, yeah you can that's right it's a cinnamon flavor but the effect of the spice is there so this is just a different flavor so i think it's that probably that same type of level they probably just they don't want to overpower your eating experience but it would give you a bit of that tingle and that kind of it's a nasal clearing type experience mm-hmm. i hate it when people use spice as some sort of form of manhood i don't know how to, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean by that uh, like, yes it, it, yeah if someone's like oh you can't eat extra spice or this thing has whatever what do you call the measurement of spice what do you call that measurement again yeah i don't know the, 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 the heat the, index that this use. is the this has ten thousand kilowatt <laughs> of whatever spice wattage whatever they call that i think what it is is just genetics it's not a question of you're man enough to take it. I think some people just have a different response. They're just more sensitive to spice than others, just like anything else. Something that's semi-spicy to me or very spicy to me, let's just say, could be very dull to somebody else's palate. It's- but I also think spice is different than heat. These flavors together is really enjoyable, but I don't want the heat that's right. To take away from the enjoyment, enjoyment of the yeah. spice. Why do you just eat a burning log then? If it's just about the heat in your mouth, it's, yeah. it's, it's like, sure, you, you can withstand your your tongue burning. Like they had the one chip challenge. You can you, know, you can buy a chip, Jason. It's one chip uh-huh. in a package. Oh, to eat why would chip. you do that? Because it has that. Oh, it has the, that much heat on heat. it? It's just oh. one. Ch- you can't eat it. It's the death chip. You can't eat it. Oh, okay. People do it on challenges and stuff. Oh, okay. But again, it's like some people can handle it better than others, even though it's the same True. chip. That being said, though, often, I remember when I was a kid, if you eat something spicy, remember what they told you to drink? Oh, milk, right? Milk, yeah. So I find it interesting that the wasabi is an ice cream. So that probably counterbalances the mm. spice a little bit. So you get more of the flavor. Still, that's, again, it's all about ratio. So if they put that spice in there, you're not just eating wasabi, the root. Yeah, frozen you've got the cream and the milk yeah, probably helps yeah. settle down the, the spice so it's just a bit of a kick and tingle yeah interesting i would never would have guessed i think in a million years if i had to come up with 100 flavors of ice cream i probably wouldn't put wasabi on there yeah you're just not very cultured no i'm not i know <laughs> all right jay this is an interesting flavor the next one that you have yeah i'm surprised that germany would be the i don't know is germany the origin of spaghetti <laughs> so Germany is bringing in the spaghetti ice cream. So they turn the classic pasta dish into sweet and frozen treat. They'll make your taste buds do a happy dance. The spaghetti ice cream. And it's not only delicious, but it's also fun to see. Here's how it works. They take ice cold vanilla flavored ice cream and push it through a special machine to create thin spaghetti like strands. These frosty noodles are piled up just like a plate of real spaghetti but here's a twist instead of using tomato sauce they pour fruity strawberry sauce all over it and sprinkle white chocolate shavings on top to mimic parmesan cheese it's like a magic trick but with ice cream this german creation is perfect for those scorching summer days when you're craving something cold sweet and a little bit unusual it's an ice cream experience that might even make you wonder why regular spaghetti isn't made out of ice cream they completely cheated (laughs) <laughs> they kind of, as per normal, Germany cheated. <laughs> They're little sneaky guys. Yeah, this one's a little bit of a cheat our, uh, to our German listener. Thank you for your submission. But yeah, they, they've created an illusion of a dish spaghetti. and made it. Yeah, so spaghetti. But I've seen the pictures of it. It is pretty oh, yeah? clever. Yeah, it is pretty clever. Spaghetti what I would like cream. about this is making the noodles, their thinly shaved noodles, with an, a little Probably harder. An ice cream cake, you know how an ice cream cake is really quite hard when you cut through it? Right. It's not as soft. So I would enjoy the kind of the crispier um, version of ice cream uh, in the noodles. So here, Jack. So here's some pictures of the spaghetti ice cream, if you can see oh. it. Yeah, yeah, it literally looks like spaghetti. Yeah. So if you're on our YouTube, you can see it. So we won't spend too much time on here because obviously our audio listeners can't see it. But just Google on your own there, folks. Spaghetti ice cream. Never would have thought it existed until our German listener sent this in to us. But here's one here of the spaghetti and meatballs ice cream. Look at that. 
So those are chocolate balls. With yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you can use chocolate. Yeah, clever little. The Parmesan is a white chocolate yeah. spreading. I, I love it. So it's very clever, but this is so we get points for clever. It looks like a real plate of spaghetti and noodles. So good, good stuff, actually. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's what it looks mm-hmm. good. So they, they cheated a little bit, but we'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. All right, then the next one is mine. <laughs> good old Mexico. What's their flavor? It's not taco. There is ice cream tacos. This is corn ice cream. <laughs> All right. Let's take a little trip to Mexico, Jay. A uh, place I've been to a few times myself. Where they come up with a cool treat that will make your taste buds dance to the tapatio. Hold on to your hats because we're talking about corn ice cream. Everybody loves corn. It's delicious. <laughs> and that, it really, it's one of those vegetables or whatever. It's just nothing is good for you about it. You know what I mean? But boy, yeah. corn of the cob, cream, corn and gravy, cornbread. I think cornbread might be the greatest bread ever made. Out of the oven, cornbread, you put butter on it. It's just something about cornbread, man. I I love cornbread, when it crumbles and everything. All right, Jay, imagine the creamiest and dreamiest vanilla ice cream you've ever had, okay, but with a twist. This ice cream is filled with golden corn kernels that adds a hint of sweetness and a touch of savory flavor. But this frozen delight isn't just a novelty. In Mexico, corn is more than just a side dish. It's a culinary superstar. They take fresh, juicy corn, and work their magic to turn it into this creamy creation. So the texture is incredibly smooth, but you also get a slight crunch from the corn, which adds a fun contrast. So if you're up for a tasty adventure in every bite, Mexico's corn ice cream is the way to go. It's freezing your creamed corn. If you're eating vanilla ice cream, and when you have whatever, like uh, a a chocolate nugget or something in your ice cream or whatever it might be, but you have corn, you pop that corn kernel in your mouth as you're eating. It's probably frozen from the ice cream. It might be an interesting experience. I bet you it, it tastes better than we're letting on. I also wonder, is it maybe not, but I was thinking like popcorn. Like well, a that's popcorn, the thing. Corn, popcorn-y flavor in yeah. the ice cream. It shouldn't be a surprise that they use corn with a sweet treat. Think of caramel corn. So you're just taking the oh, idea yeah. of caramel corn, which is popcorn yeah. with caramel topping, this is just corn with an ice cream topping or ice cream surrounding. So the idea of sweetness around a corn shouldn't it be that they have candy corn, which is actual garbage corn. That's not real corn. But the idea is that corn or corn flavored sweetness isn't really out of this world, but I've never heard of or eaten corn ice cream. So thank you, Mexico, for that, for that treat. And our listener down there in Mexico. It's nice to see. All right, Jay, last one. Yeah, we're coming in from Ireland now. So let's talk about this unique flavor that they're introducing. They've got a frozen treat that will make your taste buds do a little happy dance, especially if you're a fan of a good pint of beer. It's called Guinness Ice Cream. Yes, that famous Irish stout has found its way into the world of frozen desserts, and it's pretty amazing. A lot of folks really love this ice cream. It's creamy and smooth with a subtle taste of that distinct Guinness flavor. Imagine enjoying a multi-pint of the iconic Irish brew, but in frozen form. It's like a perfect combination of Guinness's deep roasted flavors with the sweetness of regular ice cream. So the next time you're in Ireland or come across the delightful treat at a local ice cream shop, would you be willing to give Guinness ice cream a try? Now this should almost be like, duh, of course, but yeah, beer flavored or ice cream or wine flavored or that kind of stuff but i guess this is like legit guinness the brand flavored ice cream and i mentioned earlier the beginning of the episode remember the rum flavored rum and raisin flavored ice cream it shouldn't come as a surprise that we have a, a guinness flavored ice cream yeah i suspect it's probably an easy flavor i think about even when you have a root beer float it's obviously root beer and guinness aren't the same beer but the idea that's probably what you're experiencing is that it's like a beer flow, but they just put an ice cream fla- uh, styling of an ice cream but with, with the flavor yeah. of Guinness. So they use Guinness as the liquid to make the ice cream. So very cool. Very interesting. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I wouldn't myself jump through hoops to get to it. But it to me, it makes a lot of sense that especially Ireland trying to build on the reputation of their Guinness and the whole pub vibe and all the rest so it it makes sense to me that there would be that ice cream yeah all right we'd like to thank first off we thank all of our listeners who contributed to this uh, survey when we put out the word jade that we were looking for uh unique flavors of ice cream from uh, our listeners around the world of course canada and u.s need not apply that's why we didn't uh, add those Uh, we were very grateful for the responses 
for, uh, from them. Uh, Jay, here they are again. Durian ice cream from Singapore, olive oil from Italy, lavender from France, black sesame from Japan, balsamic from Italy, red bean from China, wasabi from Japan, spaghetti ice cream from Germany, corn from Mexico, and Guinness from Ireland. Jason, which one of these 10 would you be? I'll pass. Thanks, but no thanks. Which one? As we were going through the list, I was feeling like the red bean from China was the one I was going to lean towards. Um, but the uh, corn one from Mexico. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you wouldn't want to give it a try, eh? You know, I thought I wouldn't give it a try. I know. I Sorry. I this just, is, oh, you would actually be willing to I'd be to like... Never... Yeah, this doesn't really draw me in. You get that corn. slight crunch from the corn, though. It adds a fun contrast, the listener said. Yeah, I'm not that curious about that experience, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fair. It's fair. I'm going to go with the one you mentioned. I think the red bean one. I, I get your choice. Don't get me wrong. But I think corn's a safe bet. So if I'm like, I might not enjoy the red bean. I think if I had to come down to it, I wonder if I'd really enjoy the red bean. I don't know. At least corn, I could I could tolerate. I, I corn it of itself is something that I've eaten much of and know the flavor, and it wouldn't be a shocking experience, so to speak. So if I'm talking about safety and not oh, yeah. being, if I had to pick a dessert to eat at the end of the day between red bean or corn ice cream, I'd probably just say, ah, give me the corn, save the red bean for Jason. So there you go. Red bean ice cream is my worst pick however yes of course i try all these flavors but if i had to choose as per the rules of our show i'm gonna go with number five red bean ice cream from china so there you go all right thank you everyone who joined us live on our stream again if you want to join us live join our discord join our socials the show notes has all that information so you can see when we go live and you can join the conversation send us an email we haven't had an email in so long if you send us an email throw us some suggestions at us too we're always happy to hear from our listeners see what kind of suggestions you'd have for us remember in front of every silver lining there's a cloud and today it was corn ice cream for jason from mexico and red bean ice cream from china for ryan 